Hello everyone, my name is Thomas van Winsbergen and I'm a postdoc at Centrum Wiskunde en Informatica, the Dutch National Research Institute in Mathematics and Computer Science. Today I will present our paper on eFlint, which is a domain-specific language for writing executable specifications of norms. This is joint work with Professor Tom van Engers and two PhD students of the University of Amsterdam, Luci Liu and Robert van Doesburg. The goal of our wider project is to formalize interpretations of laws, regulations, organizational policies and contracts and to use these formal interpretations to assess and enforce these various types of norms in software systems. Once we have formalized interpretations of norms, we can apply them in several ways. We can assess concrete scenarios, either scenarios that have happened in the past or hypothetical scenarios that may happen in the future. Uh, you can think of this as being similar to writing test programs. We can also determine whether a system is compliant at runtime using ex ante or ex post enforcement. Ex ante here means before the fact, ensuring that non-compliant actions are not performed, as is for example done with access control. Ex post means after the fact. Here we can think of penalizing parties for non-compliant behavior, anal analogous to policing in social systems. Ideally, we can generate system components that are correct or compliant by construction. However, this is not something that we discuss in this paper. The paper is focused on the design of eFlint. Uh, this design is evaluated using the GDPR regulation as a case study. The GDPR is a regulation from the European Union relating to privacy and data protection in general. And it's the reason that we see cookie pop-ups on basically every website nowadays. As an example of what we can do using eFlint, I included here a summary of the interpretation of Article 16 that we have formalized in the paper. Article 16 says that data subjects, which are natural persons that can be identified within data, have the right to demand rectification of inaccurate data held by the data controller. A data controller is a party collecting and processing data for a certain purpose. The interpretation we formalize consists of uh, firstly the power for the data subject to demand rectification when the data processed by the controller is inaccurate for the purpose that it is being processed. Secondly, a duty held by the controller to rectify the data without undue delay and the power of the controller to terminate the duty once accurate data is being processed. Undue delay here is a so-called open texture term, which is deliberately left open to interpretation. In the eFlint language, we want to capture norms at our original level of abstraction, and we have a specialization mechanism to concretize certain concepts within an application. For example, within an application, we can say that the duty needs to be fulfilled within five working days. In the eFlint language, powers correspond to enabled actions and duties correspond to actions that are expected to be performed after the duty has been created. The main questions that I will discuss are um, how to write down an interpretation formally in eFlint, how to write down a scenario formally in eFlint, and what does it mean to assess a sen scenario for compliance. Here it is important to note that the compliance of a scenario is always with respect to a specific interpretation. So the first question, how to write down an interpretation formally. Um, a specification is a sequence of type declarations inducing a transition system. Transitions in the system are triggered by input events and produce output events. So here we see that eFlint has a declarative component as well as a reactive component uh, responding to input events. Facts, actions, events and duties, which are the instances of fact, action, event and duty types, are considered fluence. In other words, they change over time due to the effects of actions and events. There are only implicit references to time, and references are always to now, the current time. The effects of actual time, as we encounter it in a running system, are triggered by input events. And if necessary, an internal clock can be modeled as part of a specification. So to explain Evelyn specifications within the available time, I have included a toy example consisting of two toy articles. The first article says that someone is a legal parent if they are a natural parent or an adoptive parent. In the code fragment, we see a number of fact type declarations that introduce the concepts mentioned in the article. Persons are identified by string values, and the concepts of natural parent and adoptive parent are formalized as binary relations between two persons. The placeholder declarations introduce alternative names for a type. The legal parent relation captures a so-called derived fact, whose validity is not postulated as part of a scenario, but rather computed from other facts. In this case, the derivation clause reflects directly the two alternatives uh, that form legal parenthood. 
The second article says that a child can ask a legal parent for help with their homework, and that the effect of asking for help is the creation of a duty for the parent to help. This is formalized using an act type declaration for the type ask for help. The actor and recipient components can be thought of as parameters of the action, the first of which captures the party that can perform the action, and the second captures the party that is affected by the action. The effect of the action is to create a duty help with homework, and the action is only enabled when the parent is indeed a legal parent of the child. Uh, the creates and holds when clauses, uh, there we see that uh, the, parent, the parameters are being used. The duty has a violation condition, stating that the duty is violated when the homework of the child is due. This is listed in the violation condition here. The fact homework due can be thought of as a predicate over children, and an input event will trigger the creation of a homework due instance that holds as a fact. The action help will terminate the duty. To prevent violating a duty, an actor must perform some action, like help in this example, that terminates the duty before it is violated. Returning to the central questions, uh, how do we write down the scenario in eFlint? So as explained, uh, explained on the previous slides, the declarations of a specification induce a transition system, and there are two ways um, to construct a trace within this transition system. In an offline setting, a script is a sequence of statements, some of which trigger an, uh, actions and events, and thereby triggering transitions. In an online setting, input events can trigger actions and events. Uh, a trace can be considered uh, action compliant or duty compliant. Uh, action compliant means that every transition is labeled with an action that is enabled in the source configuration of the transition. Duty compliant means that every duty in every configuration of the trace is not violated. Uh, this code, code fragment shows an example script. The first statements uh, create certain facts, namely that Alice, Bob, Chloe and David are persons and that Alice is a natural parent of Bob uh, and that Chloe is an adoptive parent of David. The next four statements are queries, confirming that the legal parent relation is derived correctly. The next, statements triggers, the next statement triggers the action of Bob asking Alice for help. This action is enabled because indeed Alice is a legal parent of Bob. The next statement indicates that Bob's homework is due, thereby causing the violation of the help with homework duty for Alice. Um, this fact is confirmed by the query, which is in the next statement. The last statement terminates the duty by executing the action uh, of Alice helping Bob. Next I will summarize the main qualities of uh, eFlint. So firstly, scenarios can be assessed in both offline and online settings. Secondly, eFlint allows interpretations to be formalized at the same level of abstraction as the original source of norms, using specialization to introduce the necessary details that concern a particular software system or application. Um, I will show an, an example of specialization on the next slide. Moreover, certain pragmatic design decisions enable reusing specifications between offline and online settings. Uh, thirdly, actors are in normative relations to each other and are associated with actions and duties. In the case of an action, there's the performing actor and the recipient actor that is somehow affected by the action. For example, by receiving a duty. In the case of a duty, there's the duty holder and the claimant. A typical design pattern is that a claimant of a duty receives a power once the duty is violated, for example, to demand compensation. Finally, eFlint has a REPL-oriented design that gives the language its reactive features, allowing both scripts and specifications to be constructed dynamically. Uh, on a generic REPL backend, we have implemented two reactive interfaces, a traditional command line interpreter and a TCP server. The TCP server allows us to experiment with runtime compliance checking and enforcement checking within distributed systems. Um, for further details, I refer to the, the paper itself. To give an example uh, of specialization, I've included some code fragments from our GDPR case study. So in the first code fragment, we see the definition of some GDPR concepts as they occur in the original higher level and reusable formalization. So we see the concepts of data, uh, subjects of data, the relation subject of that captures which subjects uh, can be identified within data, and the concept of processing uh, for a particular purpose. In the second code fragment, we uh, see the, how these types are redefined for a specific application, for example, a website. 
the purpose uh, the purpose type is redefined to essentially an enum type with the values functional personalization and tracking as purposes for collecting data the remaining declarations show that the subject of relation can be derived if we have more details about the structure of data so let's say that data corresponds to records in a database and that in a record a user is associated with an attribute name and a value for that attribute in this case we can say that the subject of a record is the user listed in the record exactly uh, this is what is expressed in the derivation class of the specialized definition of subject of Uh, the implementation of the language is in Haskell and can be found publicly on uh, GitLab, uh, on the URL, uh, URL that is given at the bottom here. Uh, and at present there are three main ways to use uh, this implementation. So firstly, for offline assessment we have developed a very simple web interface that makes it possible to write specifications and scripts and to inspect the trace that is produced by the script. Uh, this interface is currently being used mostly by uh, master students and PhD students at the University of Amsterdam. Um, so the master students do this as part of a course on policy making and uh, the PhD students use this um, in different research projects uh, related to regulated data exchange systems. So the link to the website can be uh, found on the bottom. So you can also experiment um, with the different examples that are in the paper. The REPL interpreter is a very quick and convenient tool for testing specifications and especially those uh, specialized versions of interpretations that are um, ready to be used in running systems. Um, the backend of the REPL is also used for online assessment using this TCP server that I mentioned on the previous slide. So to experiment with runtime enforcement, we integrate EVLIN specifications into systems as so-called normative actors. These normative actors receive input messages corresponding to statements or type declarations. Outgoing messages notify other components of the system of uh, new powers and duties or of any violations that have occurred. An important feature of the, the methodology that we apply here is that we can have multiple interpretations um, coexist. This could be interpretations of the same uh, regulation, for example, those are different interpretations of the same regulation, or um, interpretations of different regulations. So to conclude, uh, the takeaway message is that EFLIN makes it possible to formalize norms from a variety of sources and to reuse specifications across applications in both offline and online settings. And as future work, uh, we want to improve the tool support that we have for the language um, in the form of an IDE but, and perhaps also uh, a notebook support. We want to be able to extract human readable and application specific diagnostic reports from traces. And we want to demonstrate our runtime enforcement methodology in a future paper. And finally, we want to uh, really enable our DSL um, to be used by legal experts and policy makers. So there's uh, a number of things that we want to do here to improve this. Uh, the first step is to introduce uh, normative constructs as syntactic constructs in the language. So these are uh, the concepts of power, prohibition, permission, and obligations. We want to add syntax that capture frequently recurring design patterns. And the development environment that we want to produce should be friendly to non-programmers. So with this, I conclude my presentation, and I thank you very much for your attention.